Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome to another episode of Dare to Leap. I am here to interview a fabulous woman today. Her name is Jackie Barker, and I have the privilege of knowing her personally and professionally, and I hope you get to know her that well today. Jackie has a team at her company called Barefoot Design Collective. And they are design in a day specialists. You might be going, what is design in a day specialist? Well, they provide professional and custom branding, graphic and website design services for small businesses looking for fast, affordable and effortless marketing solutions all served up with a smile. Now that's exciting. And I can tell you that of those three, you know, sometimes they say, and they is, you know, the world at large, they say, you know, you're going to be lucky if you can get two out of three. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I would want, I could only choose one of those three. I'd be happy. And it would be effortless. That's what I want. I want effortless. And I know for sure, Jackie brings that Jackie and her team. Jackie, I am so excited to get to talk with you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Kathy. Super excited. Um, So we're going to explore in a few minutes, we're going to explore much deeper this design in a day specialization you do. But first, I want our listeners to get to know a little bit more about you. So would you mind sharing your journey to becoming the web design expert that you are today? I would be happy to. So um, small town, Wisconsin girl, um, grew up in the you know, 70s and 80s. Um, didn't even really you know, think that being creative was a career opportunity at all. Um, took art classes, all of that in high school. And I loved art. I had a sister-in-law that was a graphic designer. Um, she passed away when I was 16 in an accident. So you know, I oh, it just kind of scared me, away. And, it, and I know that it wasn't related to that, but it kind of scared me away from that field. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. There was some some PTSD there, I think, a little bit for it. That sure, age. yeah. Um, but I did end up going into marketing. Um, I got an associate's degree in marketing at a technical college when my kids were little, um, and just kind of have always done those types of jobs from marketing customer service, um, kind of sales support type roles. Um, The year after I graduated with my um, associate's degree, I was actually hired to work at the college that I graduated from in the marketing department. And at that point- Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and I was like- They like it so much. They're like, you can't leave, you got to work for us now. Exactly. And it was cool because it was such a small town feel. You know, it was a, a small college and, you know, it was like a family. Um, and I worked there for eight years in that department, um, you know, and that was back when people really didn't have websites, um, you know, the the larger businesses did, um, I helped our web designer, I'm sorry, webmaster, um, with some (laughs) coding on the back end. And that's really was my introduction to websites. Um, I was helping her what they call keyword stuffing back then, um, you know, because that was what you did. It's, it's definitely it's no, 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 no. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, but I really enjoyed that. Um, I also did some, you know, I was kind of a backup for the graphic designer for the college and, and did, you know, some support type things, um, but never thought that I could do this for a full time living. Um, Fast forward a a decade or so, and um, my husband and I started our own kitchen and bath showroom back in 2016. Um, We did that for three years, and at the end of 2019, he was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. It's just too much. Um, And so that was when I met Kathy. Um, 
I came across you. I don't even know. It had to have been a Facebook ad or something. Um, and so I took your free one of your free trainings and met with Mary. Um, and you know, I, I really struggled with that decision. Um, Oh my gosh, you did. <laughs> and Mary, Mary Hanley is who she's talking about. Mary is, uh, you know, an amazing virtual expert and a coach in my, on my team. And she saw Jackie's brilliance. And I did too, because when you were going through the training, I was just like, this woman is brilliant. She is going to have an amazing career. She can help so many people. So Mary and I, and Jackie, I, I think you know now that you've been in my program for as long as you have. I don't do that normally. I don't reach out to people and go, oh my gosh, you have got to do this. I just, you know, I hope you choose it if it's right for you. And if not, that's fine too. But you, I mean, both Mary and I were just like, this woman, she's amazing. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And, you know, and since I've met you, um, at that point, it was kind of, I want to do the broad VA kind of services. Never again, never thought about focusing on the marketing or the, um, the design aspect of it. Um, luckily with your coaching and co coaching in the Sapphires group and, you know, having Jennifer as my coach, um, who's an amazing website and marketing person, um, really helped me to narrow in on, you know what, why am I trying to do all of these other things that I don't enjoy? I want to do what I love. And that's, that's design. And I love helping um, small businesses. Um, I've helped build a, a number of the VA websites, which is awesome. Um, seeing them kind of pull everything together and launch their, their careers as well. So. Yeah. And so what, what were you, um, I have a question for you on this. I'm trying to phrase it without putting words in your mouth. <laughs> I don't like to put words in people's mouth. Um, so when you said you hadn't thought about doing this and you were thinking generalists, what was it that shifted your, what did you learn or what did you see or experience that helped you shift from, oh, maybe I should do this specialty? Well, it, I think it started with um, you saying, don't just do what you what you what you're good at or what you have experience in. Do what make you know what really makes you happy, what makes your heart sing. Um, and I think that was what started it. Um, but then it was a big mindset shift for me. Um, I realized that I am talented and I am creative and I can do it and I can be creative and do the techie side too, because I love the tech, like um, being in the back end of WordPress and making the code work and all of that. It just, it, it's exciting. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Because everybody has experiences that shift in a different way. And that helps me too, because I, you know, not that we don't need general admins, we do, but you're simply never going to make the kind of money and uh, at, when you generalize as when you specialize and you know i want everybody to earn as much as they want to earn and i i just saw such potential in you and um so congratulations on being able to make that mindset shift because that's not easy mm -hmm. and that also demonstrates your growth and I, I adore working with people who are willing to get outside their comfort zone, which is what you did, and grow. That's who I think all business owners want to work with is somebody like you who is willing to grow because they want help growing their businesses. And if you're stagnant, they're not, you're not going to be able to help grow their businesses either. And the way you work now, you can really, really help them. And I, you know, and that's, that's such a huge thing. Kathy, <laughs> I'm going to brag on you a little bit. You have introduced me to so many amazing people. Um, and it's who you surround yourself with, right? So thank it's you. That's exactly who you're around. Thank you, you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And you've taken advantage of it. You know, I mean, I can say here. Here's a lot of good stuff. And you can still go, no, I'm too scared to do it. Or I don't have time to do it. You made it a priority. And uh, that's very exciting. 
the other thing I want to uh, talk about that you just said is because this is so true. I have seen it many, many times. I've been, I have been um, in this industry since 2001. Yes, I was a pioneer. Uh, I, I wore the little uh, bonnet and everything. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was on the wagon train as we crossed over the Rockies. Um, but time and time again, I have seen exactly what you said, which is someone is usually either creative or techie. That combo is, is very rare because they're two opposite extremes. They really mm -hmm. are. Um, so often I'll see um, a, a solo person, you know, a solo web designer whose uh, tech skills works great, but the designs don't look that good. Or mm -hmm. I'll see a beautifully designed website that really doesn't have the functionality needed. With your amazing combo of creative and tech, you've got it all. <laughs> the total package. That's right. That's right. And I think there's one more piece um, that is important in this too, which is also rare to have, which is you're also strategic, a strategic thinker. So you can help somebody determine what kind of website they should have, as well as how it should function and how you can make it look amazing for their brand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and not every, and they, they call them cookie cutter, right? Not everybody needs the same exact website. But, so with my website and a day service, one of the things that I do is my dad was a in construction, my brother's were all in construction, and it's all about using the tools, right? You have tools, you use them for the purpose that they were created. Um, some people will frown on people who use website templates. I'm all about that. Um, the structure- Why recreate there. the wheel? Why recreate right. the wheel? Exactly, exactly. Oh so my gosh. You use a template, you build the, you know, you take the content, you stick it in, you tweak it, you put in the, the customer's colors, you put in their pictures. Nobody's going to put two websites side by side and say, oh my gosh, those are the exact same because they're not. The structure is no. the same, the buttons are the same, but the fonts are different, the pictures are different, the colors are different, you'll never know. So that's how I'm able to do a, you know, five or six page website in a day. Because I'm using wow, the that's tool. amazing. Using the that is called device. efficiency. Yeah. That's called efficiency. <laughs> well, and so not only can you actually do a website in a day and doing it that way, it's not going to look like anybody else's website. Um, and you talked about that affordability factor. I'll tell you, I have talked to, well, I have personally worked with uh, as a VA, oh gosh, at least 500 people all of you had to have websites. And those few who said, I want a custom website because my business cannot manage doing anything that's based, you know, that's not totally custom. Guess what happened with every one of them? They ended up spending $10,000 and more, 10,000 on a website. Now, I mean, if you are Coca-Cola or somebody like that, that's, that's a drop in the bucket. But if you're a small business owner, 10000 for a website that is going to constantly need to be changed and updated, be, that's a lot of money. And those custom websites can't be easily tweaked and updated either. Can you talk a little bit about that, the difference between those totally custom websites and customization the way you do it? So using WordPress, um, and there are other tools out there, but I pretty much use WordPress um, and Elementor. I mean, so I'll build their website using the theme that they pick, um, or I'm sorry, the template that they pick. And then after our design in a day is done, um, they have a 30 day window of, of QA, right? So if they find something that doesn't work or, you know what, can we tweak this? Can we, you know, move this around or change this picture? Or, you know, um, I just did one yesterday where they didn't have their keyword research done. So I said, okay, you know, let's go do your keyword research, bring it back to me and I'll put those in. So in that 30 day window, it's not going to cost them anything. Now I'm not going to do a redesign 
it's, you know, it's little tweaks here and there. Um, right. You're not going to do a total redesign for the cost of the initial one. Right. I totally understand. Uh, it, nobody should expect that. They, so, you'll do a total redesign if they pay you for a new website. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, and so during that 30 days, I'll create videos, short little video trainings, you know, this is how you add a blog post. This is how you update your plugins because updating and maintaining your site is super important. You need to be in there at least once a week and making sure that everything's up to date. Um, so I'll provide them with those little training videos um, so that they can do it themselves. A lot of times when you have custom sites, it's all custom coding, really super easy for someone to go in there and make a change and break their site. And then you're paying that person to fix whatever you broke. Um, so it just makes right. sense. It just makes sense. It, yeah. And so when my experience, and believe me, I have worked with a lot of customers who did this. I never asked for a custom website. Why didn't I ever ask for a custom website? Because I saw how beautiful the number one, love WordPress. WordPress is awesome. If anybody is listening to this and it's like, I wonder which kind of website I should get. You don't need to think about it anymore. Just get a WordPress website because they are the most flexible. They can grow with your business and they're, they're so much more affordable and can be search engine optimized so much easier than anything else that's out there. I mean, that's why 80% of all websites that new websites that are created are WordPress websites. <laughs> There's a reason. So where was I? Oh yeah. So these uh, companies I worked with who did have those custom websites created, they would ask me, Jackie, are you laughing yet? They would ask me to go in and do something. I'm like, oh, I know better than even try to log in to a custom website because I am not techie at all. Right. And they would go back to the company and it would always be something like, well, that'll be $200. What? All I need is this one little thing tweaked. Yes. $200. Because that's their minimum. And if there was any length of time, and we're not even really talking a year here, we're talking nine months or less sometimes, they'd go back. The company wouldn't be available anymore to do anything. Mm -hmm. I've or, had, or, yeah, okay. go ahead. I was going to say, I've had two clients come to me now where I was the third designer that they had worked with. Yes. On the same yes. website build. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't think that's unusual, Jackie. I really oh. don't, sadly. So you really need to do your homework. And by the way, that's one of the reasons why in my training program, even though most, I'd say about 50% of VAs create their own website and the others go to somebody like you, Jackie. Um, and I appreciate you doing those websites for them because they don't want to take the time to learn how to build a website and then maintain it. And business owners, if you're listening to this and you're like, I can do my own website. I'm techie. Please spend your time making money rather than creating your own website. Exactly. Exactly. Why spend all these hours learning to do something that you're not going to do consistently as a business? Focus yeah. on what you do. Let me build your website in a day and let's go. Let's yeah, that's called leveraging your time and it is well worth it. Um, and so, um, I just want to wrap up the thought about, you know, when you hire a custom website from scratch done, please make sure that you do your research to find a company who's been there long-term is going to be there long-term because you need to be able to go back to them and have updates made and ask them what is, you know, how much does maintenance cost? What's the minimum before you hire them to do it? Because if you don't know that they can really, uh, the cost of maintenance can be more than the cost of the website. Um, and then when you do have to go to somebody else to update it, sometimes th the company has used, and I don't even know the term, Jackie, you tell me, oddball coding or <laughs> unique coding or. <laughs> right, right. It's, ever, coders all do di things differently, so. Yeah, like, and nobody else can figure out what over, they've done. Yeah, if you're taking over for somebody else and going back trying to figure out what they did, it can be a challenge. Yeah, versus with a WordPress site, 
you, you know, even like me, me, who is not techie at all, right? Remember, not techie. Turning on my computer is challenging. I got a new mouse and I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. Jackie knows me. She knows I'm not exaggerating. Even I was able to learn how from videos like Jackie's talking about to log in in the back end of my WordPress website and load blog posts. It's a miracle. Wow, that's huge, Kathy. <laughs> I know. Good job. And everybody else, is, everybody else that does this is like, isn't that just basically copy and paste? Yeah, that's a lot of it. I know how to copy and paste. <laughs> But I had to be able to log in and find where it was and do the SEO on it. So um, if I can do it on a WordPress site, anybody can. Uh, that, that's really true. Okay, so now that we have just tried to discourage people, if you've got plenty of money, feel free to do the custom stuff. And, if in, months, you want, in, months, in months of time and meetings. Yes. yes all of that. Thank you. Months of times and meetings and questions of... Um, with words, techie words that I'm like, could you tell me what that word means that you just said? Because <laughs> I've never heard it before. Um, so if you're like most of us and you want a really good website that's going to convert, uh, that's going to draw people in, get them to stay, convert them to paying clients, all of those good things that you really want and rank well, um, you know, consider, consider doing a website with somebody like Jackie, and you know, of course, I'm highly recommending Jackie because um, you know I've experienced working with her. She's amazing, as you can tell. Um, so there was one. Oh, so maintenance. We've talked a little bit about ma what maintenance is like with the custom website. Kind of a nightmare. Um, what is maintenance like? Um, and do you provide maintenance? So what's maintenance like with a WordPress website? And do you provide maintenance? And what kind of cost um, are we talking about there? So maintenance or on a WordPress site, um, because, and that's one of the things that you'll see is people will complain about WordPress, that it, you have to update it and all of this. It's basically WordPress does everything they can to make sure that they're up to date and secure and, and all of that. So then WordPress will push out an update and then all of the plugins need to be updated. Um, and the plugins are kind of what gives your site the different functionalities. Um, I use a tool. Yeah, think, of, think of plugins like an app, right? Exactly. It's an app exactly. for WordPress. Oh my God. Could we just stop for a minute and let me <laughs> pat myself on the back that I knew that? <laughs> that is a great, great analogy, Kathy. Woo, that was it. I used to not know what an app was. I used to not know what a plugin was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're awesome. Um, so it's important to monitor those um, and at least go out to your site once a week just to make sure everything is updated. Um, you know, that you have a security plugin, backups um, running every day. Um, that's what somebody that maintains your site should be doing. I have a tool that I use to monitor that. It actually checks for broken links. So if you're linking to somebody else's site and they remove that blog post, I get a notice that says, hey, you've got a broken link, go check it out. Um, so those awesome. are all things. So those are all things that I handle on the back end for my clients. Um, I basically have three packages. It's a little more if it's a membership site or um, like a course, a training, um, or an e-commerce store. Um, but for just a and do you have the packages? Do you have the packages yeah. on your website? Yeah. Yep. I so have we'll, can packages. you just share your URL for your website rather than saying what the packages are now and sure. then people can go look at them so that this remains evergreen because we know things change. Oh, true. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> so it's barefootdc.com. DC. Barefoot. D is in design. C is in collective. Cat. Collective. That too. <laughs> design cat. <laughs> Why did they think of that? <laughs> <laughs> So you only have four cats and so not much to think about. Yeah, uh, so, so barefoot barefootdc.com. And you can see the maintenance packages there. You can also learn more about Jackie and her team and the branding they do, the graphic design they do, as well as the design in a day websites that they do. Yep. 
Yeah. Yep. We're not wrapping this up. I usually don't share that until the end, but I just wanted to, because I know I had just said what your pricing is and I wanted to not have you do that because I want this to be available for years to come because this is great information. That's the other thing I love about, there's so many things I love about WordPress. You know, I'm a big WordPress fan. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them is it's been around for a it's been around for a very long time. It's going to be around for a very long time. And that is rare in this internet world. That is rare in this fast changing technology world. And that's why WordPress does do updates regularly because things change so fast that they didn't, they would quickly become outdated. Anything else we haven't talked about about what you love about WordPress? Um, no. I think we pretty much covered everything. I mean, the options yeah, are I have another limitless. <laughs> I'm usually, I usually don't have that many analogies, but um, you know how like your like Apple products in you know your your iPhone has tons of apps, but others don't have quite as many. And then because you know everybody wants to put their apps on Apple products, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's how WordPress is with websites. They have more plugins created for WordPress than I've ever seen for any other website uh, platform. Am I right on that? Oh my gosh, yeah. There are so many options out there. And it's really important too to do your research on them because just because they're available in the marketplace does not mean that they're what you need. Um, yeah. I have one client right now who has two different apps or plugins for um, photo carousels. Well, her site is super slow and I have a feeling that those two plugins are conflicting with each other. So I'm going in and I'm trying to determine what's slowing her site down. Um, I had one client, her site, when I brought her on board, she was paying like $300 a month for website maintenance. She came to me, um, my top level, and she's paying like a third of that. And she said she's getting better service than she oh, was yay. the more expensive. Um, yeah. but her site was graded with, um, GT metrics is one of the tools that you can check for site speed. She had a score of a D so letter score, right. And well, I got a B, up, a, B in the best F B in the worst. She got a D. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Dang. And, um, that's bad. bad. <laughs> yeah. So I did a little work on it over the last month and got her up to an A over the weekend. And I was so excited. I'm like, yes. Oh, Jackie, that's awesome. You did a high five yourself on that one. <laughs> so, yep, I shared that. I shared that one with her right away. So. Um, so as you can probably tell, I had a WordPress website for a very long time. I started out with one kind of a website and it quickly became out of date. It wasn't a WordPress website. Then I made the smart decision to move to a WordPress website and it grew with me from a 100,000 VA business to a million dollar um, training and coaching business. Literally, that website grew with me like that. I did not have to have a new website. I just kept updating. I act like I did it. Having my web design team and maintenance team update my website. Now, that is how powerful that is. Think about all the money I saved on doing that. But one of the things that I don't think, I know for sure I didn't realize, and so I'm assuming a lot of other business owners don't realize, is that your website is a living entity. It's not one and done. It's not, oh, got the website designed. I don't have to think about it anymore. So could you talk a little bit about that, Jackie? Um, so the biggest factor with that is SEO. Everybody wants to rank in, on the first page of Google. I'm sorry, is a new site, that's not gonna happen. Um, you have to put a lot of work into it, updating content, you know, constantly adding blog posts, um, updating your site. Um, there's a lot of work and, you know, people invest a lot of money to get in, to get on the first page. They really do. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. and, and that's the biggest thing is just being consistent with updating your content, making sure that it's maintained secure, um, and updated that way. Um, and again, like you said, it grows with you, you know, um, yeah. we had, there was one VA that was in the coaching call yesterday that is now looking at creating a course. And, um, she's one of my clients. I'm like, we can totally, you can totally add 
a membership plugin onto your site and build your site right from your website. And that's helping because it's bringing traffic to your site. You're not sending them someplace else. So. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did when I moved from being a VA to training and had a training program. We added a membership plugin. Yeah. yeah, it was it was amazing to just be able to do that and not have to have an entirely new website because that would have been so expensive in the plugin and the cost to have the plugin set up was m minimal. Um, the other thing that I did wrong was I didn't have somebody doing maintenance on a regular basis like you're doing. So I would have, you know, and you think I'm, even if I looked at it and saw something wrong, I wouldn't know what to do about it. Like I would literally message when I would see something, I would message my web uh, maintenance people and say, there's a flash, something blue flashing. And they're like, what is it? And I'm like, it's a little square and it's blue and it's flashing. <laughs> So then they'd have to go what did you it. what did you do, Kathy? <laughs> and guess what? I hadn't done anything, but it was like you're talking about a plugin that hadn't been updated because I was only having somebody do the minimal once a month and things would crash. And when your website is shut down, your business is shut down. It's like having a close sign on your door. Nobody's gonna come in. We had um, my first, my very first website client, uh, they had a WooCommerce store, starfishwishes.net. They, um, they decided that they were just going to maintain it themselves. If they create crafty things and jewelry out of seashells, they're very, cool. very, very cool stuff. Um, and this was yeah. right at the beginning of COVID. Um, they had been doing farmers markets and craft fairs and stuff like that. Well, then when COVID hit, they're like, we have no way to sell our stuff. So they started building it themselves. They learned very quickly. They're like, yep, this is not us. So they, they reached out to me, um, but they wanted to maintain it themselves. They didn't have a lot of extra money to spend. And, and a couple months later, I went to their site to look for something. And I'm like, um, what did you guys do? Your website's not working. <laughs> and so they had to pay me for my time to go in and fix it where as soon as we finish that, they're like, well, we might as well just pay you monthly and have you maintain it. Then we don't have to worry about that again. So, yeah, because it's less expensive to do it on a regular basis and keep it up to date than to have to fix it after it's broken. And Jackie, let's be honest about this. How many people are going to go to a website like that and then even bother to contact the people and say, hey, your website's broken? Right. Yep. Yep. They'll just go on to the next, the, the next competitor you know, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, how many, do you know the stats on how many seconds somebody is willing to look at, or it might be a minute. It's a very short period of time. They're willing to look at a website before deciding to jump back out. I think it's like five seconds. It, I mean, it's so crazy that, short. Yeah. yeah. So that header image uh, or header area on your website needs to just totally pull them in. That's right. That's right. And if they look at it and there's some gobbledygook up there, or it's the other thing that I, I will tell you, <laughs> I, I everybody has to be, or most people have to be guilty of this. If I am, um, when I go to a website that I can tell is so out of date uh, and you can tell at a glance, how can you tell, give some tips on how you can tell at a glance if your website's out of date? If a website oh is out of date. They're going to be super slow. Um, actually, down at the bottom, a lot of times they'll have a copyright date on there. Um, you could look at that CL. Yeah, you can look at that. Yep. Um, that's a good sign. Um, I always look at the size. Yep. Like, give it because the sizes of websites have really changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to talk about the size, but if it's tiny, if it's not taking up the whole screen, it's probably really old. <laughs> can yeah. can you talk a little bit about that, about those um, changes? So that, but also if they have the, like the revolving picture at the top of the page, that's probably a good sign that it's an older one. Um, just style-wise too, you know, um, the pictures, the pictures are outdated. Um, yeah. or 
quality. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, uh, that, that kind of stuff you're talking about, I call it flashy. What, mm -hmm. Wasn't there a word like flash? Wasn't yeah. that one of the words yeah. that you used? Yeah. That gone now is flash old. I always hated flash. So, I think so. Um, I took a class when I was working at the college. I took a class on learning flash. That was really hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I never used it. Race. It was fun. I think that, oh my gosh, that's so funny because, you know, I worked with real estate agents uh, from 2001 to 2008. And in that time frame is when flash was popular. Is that when you worked at the college? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And the, uh, uh, agents would come to me and they would say, you know, we want a flashy website. And they'd show me an example of those kinds of websites. And I'd be like, I highly, I highly don't recommend those. If that's what you want, you don't want to work with me. <laughs> Not because I designed the website. I didn't, but I didn't, I just knew that it wasn't working as well as other stuff was. And the website design companies I recommended for real estate agents back then, again, this was before WordPress, um, they didn't do flash because they knew it was challenging even then. And now you're right, that's, that's gone. Um, yeah, and I, think, so, and I think flash was one of those really insecure kind of coding things. It was easy for people to hack, if I remember right. Oh, oh that's, that's a little really bit good. above my tech skills. I'm not a coder. And I don't geek out on talking about code. I know enough to get by. Okay, good. <laughs> I know the word code. That's all I know. <laughs> we don't speak in code. <laughs> now, my mother-in-law used to speak in code. And seriously, she would always be like, big ears are listening. And then she would say some code words. <laughs> so that's a whole nother aside. Shiny object, back to the topic. Um, so how about some tips on, um, and I'm blanking on what this is called, but when people come to your site, you, you already talked about that header area mm -hmm. being so important to pull people in. Any tips on what you recommend to do to pull those people in? So I actually just, so I always tell Mary Hanley, I used to tell Mary Hanley that I don't do words and Mary doesn't do words either. So she no, and I Mary are like, we're like kindred spirits. <laughs> we both yeah. say we can't, we don't do words. She's actually pretty good at words. Um, so I really struggle with the words on my website. Um, so I recently purchased the book by Donald Miller, Story Brand. And I've been, um, and joined his business made simple. Um, so I'm really kind of getting into the, the words that now that help drive the design. Um, oh, so it's that. about having, it's the, you know, having the, the call to action, you know, having a button up in the top right corner. It's, it's all about psychology and where our eyes go when we're on the screen. And um, yeah, the story brand method is where it's at. Um, that's kind of next on my list of things to to learn and, and to incorporate into my business is doing that. Um, I'm not a copywriter, but I have a number of people that I work with that do copy. Um, oh, so. That's exciting. Oh, wow. I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but having, yeah. having, having consistent calls to action throughout each page, um, you know, following, having your customers follow their journey through the site is important. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, I know for me, kind of the very first thing that I look for is when I go to Google and I do a search mm -hmm. and then the search comes up and when I click on a button and then it goes to the website, if that same thing I searched for isn't obvious, if it's like totally different, I'm like, this isn't even what I was searching for. Now, maybe that site actually has some more buried in it, what I was searching for. But if it's not right there, obvious, I'm not going to. So um, I think that's really important to have that consistency and what is showing up in, a, in the search and what is actually on your site that people can see right away. Yep. And that's, that's where your SEO comes in, your search engine opt optimization. Okay. There you go. I didn't know what caused it. Yes. yes <laughs> what, has, what, what makes that match up? <laughs> you you entered in some term that they had listed in it as a keyword and um that that's called your bounce rate so if somebody comes to your site and leaves right away 
they bounced. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to tell you a true confession. Here's what I actually Googled today that that happened. I go, I like, I like this brand of wine called Fit Vine. And I Googled Fit Vine coupon. Because <laughs> I, oh, okay. I like a coupon. I'm telling you, I like a coupon. And ton, you know how it is when you search for coupons. Tons of things came up on the Google search. Fit Vine coupon, 15% off, this much off, this much off, this much off. Of course, like most people, the first one that came up, I clicked on. It, it didn't have anything to do with Fit Vine. It was a coupon? It literally said, it, it did have to do with coupon. It said at the top, we have 55 coupons for thing, for stores like Fit Vine. No, thank you. Wow. I want Fit Vine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But they got me, you're right, from the SEO because they had Fitvine up there. But it wasn't Fitvine. It was like Fitvine. I don't want one like Fitvine. I want a Fitvine. Right. So I went back to the search engine and the rest of them did have actual coupons. <laughs> so guess what I ordered today? Guess what I ordered today? Did you order <laughs> Fitvine? <laughs> I did. <laughs> And I got a 10% discount. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what people are looking for, right? They want, here's what I'm looking for. Does this meet my criteria? And when it's obviously no, here are 55 stores. I don't want, I don't want 55 stores. Mm -hmm. huh? no. Yes, I want and I bought. Wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I bought after I found it. So that's what you want. You want people to come see exactly what they want go yes this is for me this is what i wanted and then you know keep reading and go oh i'm gonna buy this mm -hmm. and you yeah. can do that for people and can you so the seo part mm -hmm. you not only design the website but you also do the seo talk a little bit about that so um i do basic seo i'm not an seo expert um i know people <laughs> Um, I can guide people in doing keyword research. Um, so you don't do the keyword research part, but you what what is the part that you do? Um, so there's a plugin for that. <laughs> um, remember how I mentioned keyword stuffing? This is the opposite of keyword stuffing. You basically have a keyword. You make sure that the keyword is in your title of your page. You make sure that it's in your headings and spread out in your page um, or in the content of the page. And that's what impacts your SEO. So how you appear in Google search. Um, you can use synonyms, stuff like that. And basically there's a, the plugin has a field where you enter in the keyword and then you can enter in your meta description. So that is when you do that Google search and you search for Fitvine, right? Um, Fitvine coupon. <laughs> There's that little, <laughs> that short little paragraph underneath it. This it's called a snippet that kind of is supposed to tell you what that page is about. And that keyword should also be in that meta description. So next time you do a search, Kathy, just check your meta description and see if it has that in there too. Okay. Okay. You, 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 can you tell you lost me? I went meta description. What's the meta description? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the little paragraph underneath the link that you click on when you do a search. Oh, so make sure it says it there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. You just gave a good search tip too. Um, so when you when you design a website, do you load content for the person also? Yes. You load so when I, when I do my website in a day, um, I basically will give them a content planner, right? That says, these are the pages. These are all the Ooh. things that you need to fill out. Um, and that, you know, that's your title of your page. That's your headings. Um, the content itself, the keywords, um, images, because images that I like, you might not like. So it's kind of all of that. It puts a little bit on the business person, but it's your site. So you need to, you need to kind of own that. Um, so when they get all of their content and images and everything all gathered together, then they book their day. And then I take everything that they did 
um, and put it into the, the template. Um, and for example, like I'll do the homepage first because that makes sense, right? That's where you start. Um, and then right. I'll share that page with the client and say, okay, homepage is ready for a quick review. Let me know what you think or we, you know, any little changes you want made. Um, and they'll either say, yeah, I like that font. Don't like that font. I can change the fonts a little bit. Um, switch pictures, stuff like that. But then I'll just keep moving on to the next page and, and the next page. Um, and within within the day, so the site's built. Um, sometimes I'll do have to do things on the back end the next day, you know, adding the keywords or making sure that it's mobile optimized just to make sense. Make just to make sure that it, you know, everything looks good on your phone because everybody's on their phone. Um, yeah, it has it. to be. So, well, it doesn't it have to be mobile optimized now or Google won't even rank it at all? You get penalized if penalized if okay. issues. And that's another thing. You don't want to be penalized by Google. <laughs> no, no. I get, um, I'll get notifications. Oh, your site, there's a problem with one of your pages. Um, so then I'll go mm -hmm. and look and the same for my clients um, and I'll go and check it. And a lot of times it's just a glitch on their end. Um, when the robot called, scrawled, scrawled the page. Um, <laughs> and so then I'll just verify that the fix was made and usually it just is taken care of immediately. So um, the more we talk, the more I'm thinking, oh my gosh. You know so much, all of these little things like robots crawling and that it's a glitch, not something that's actually broken. Do you know how much time most people would spend on, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my site and what do I do about it? Rather than just knowing, having somebody like you who just goes, mm, that's just a glitch, boom, here's what's done. Yep, done, move on. Oh my gosh, that right there, just that one little thing is worth a fortune uh, because I would spend hours, not only time, but my emotion and my energy would be like, my site's broken. <laughs> yeah, but as soon as you get, as soon as you get that email, right? It's like, oh my gosh, now what? Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm here for. And you're so calm, Jackie. I love how calm you are about it. Can you tell I'm never calm about website stuff? Yeah. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I go, oh my God, my website's broken. <laughs> Messaging, fix my website. That's why we have um, backups, just in case. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You have it set up so it automatically, you set up the website you designed so they automatically back up, what, on a daily basis, did you say? Yep, on a daily basis. Um, I just keep two um, backups. Otherwise, your Google Drive will end up totally full. But, yeah. So um, see, I'm, I didn't know that either. I didn't know about Google Drive with it. I didn't know you should only keep two. I didn't know you should do it on a daily basis. It's, it's, it's the kind of stuff that, that I don't want to know about. I just right. want to hire somebody like you oh, or exactly you. <laughs> um, a lot of the platforms have their own backups, but it's a little, it can be a bit of a challenge getting in where if you have them save, you know, in your own folders, you can just do it yourself. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up here. Is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you wanna make sure that's a tip, a tool, or something I haven't thought to ask you about that we need to let our listeners know about when it comes to having this amazing website that's gonna do everything that they want it to do for their business? So I've actually created um, an assessment for people that already have that have their own website that they can go um, download it, check. It's got this whole checklist of things. I think it's two pages, maybe more. Um, and it pretty much walks you through and makes sure this is done, this is done, this is done. And um, yeah, it's great. And then if you need okay, help cool. or you decide, you know what, I don't want to do this. Just reach out to me. Yeah. But it's bare, barefootdc.com slash health. Health as in am I in good health? And yep. my website in good health. Exactly. So web awesome. website, I love it. Yeah. website health assessment. We all need to do that. 
And I used to recommend that you did an assessment like that once a year at the minimum. Would you recommend that? Or does it need to be done once a quarter or more often? I think a full on assessment, um, especially yeah. if you have somebody maintaining your site or you're maintaining your site on the regular, um, mm -hmm. you know, once a year should be fine. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's always good to do either at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year so that you don't forget. Yeah. And then if you do it that way, you can also make sure that the copyright date is changed. But isn't there like a way now that it can automatically change? Yeah, you use a code. There's a code. There's a code for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you an NCA? NCIS lover, the TV show love, NCIS. I love all of the NCISs. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite scenes ever was when Mark Harmon had his phone and he was, do you remember this? And he was breaking into somebody's back door and he busted out the, the uh, glass with his phone and he said, there's an app for that. <laughs> I love that show. I thought that was so hysterical. I love it because that's, that's so me. I'm like, I know that there are apps on this phone. I'm not exactly sure how to use all of them. <laughs> so, Jackie, this has been so insightful. Thank you so much well, for having this conversation and sharing all your knowledge. Well, not all your knowledge. You have a lot more knowledge than this, but insights that we need to make a decision um, and to help us decide. Um, and, oh, I know one more question. So if somebody has already done their website, their website's already done, but they don't have maintenance, somebody maintaining it. Will you work with people like that? Will you maintain their websites for them? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Okay, cool. So whether you're looking to create a brand new website, you need an updated website, um, or you want maintenance done or all the above, okay. contact Jackie. We're going to have her link to her website, barefootdc.com in our show notes. And um, Jackie, do you do like, do you have conversations with people if they want to just talk with you to find out more about how, absolutely. what it's like to work? With? Yeah, absolutely. Um, barefootdc.com slash coffee dash chat. Ooh. Or find coffee dash chat. Oh, and where, what are you on Instagram? Barefoot Design Collective. Cool. And also on Facebook. You're just everywhere. I You're am. so techie. I, I get around. And you guys, I want, I also want you to know, like Jackie is, is very, very professional. As you can tell, she's very, very knowledgeable. As you can tell, remember, she said all of it with a smile. She is an incredibly positive person and tons of fun. So if you also like to have fun in your business, you're going to love working with Jackie. So, Jackie, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. This has been nice. I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.